This is In Demand Uncut with Jim Gellatley at the cutting edge of new music. So I've just seen the great hip hop hoax and uh, joined right now by Brains, uh, or Gavin. Uh, yeah, yeah. Gavin, Bain, Brains. A lot of people still call me Brains. And uh, <laughs> they're the ones that are kind of seeing this and going, Whoa, he's not that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoyed the, the, the film. It's a, it's a documentary. There was talk of uh, uh, a screenplay and everything. But you know what? Had that been a movie, it probably wouldn't have been believable. No, but the thing is, it's going to be a movie. There's, we're, we're actually, um, with the kind of interest that this documentary is built, it's just it's giving the story not another... 10, 15 years more life, so I'm just still rolling with it. But yeah, we're in talks with the with some pretty big companies on, on a big motion picture deal. I think it was a bit earlier, uh, it was too early, you know, originally with the book. I had that plan of book, uh, documentary, album, motion picture, but it was too early, I think, you know. And Irvin was on board, Irvin Welsh was on board, but it was, he was just crazy busy. Everything he's done has been made in a, you know, a movie now. So, um, but this, this seems like the right way around, you know, book and then documentary and then motion picture, so... It, it's a fascinating story how two guys are in Dundee, uh, they're rejected by record companies because they're rapping in Scottish accents. Now, the, the music scene has changed dramatically in the, this short space of time. Do you think if you were doing that now, there would be more interest and you wouldn't have to adopt American personas? Because Sc Sc Scottish hip-hop has really sort of taken off. And yeah. it's got its own identity now. Yeah, I think if we were doing it now, I mean, we, we are doing it now, Silver and Brazen got back together and we're doing it in our own accents. Um, but it still is kind of, we sound still quite, we're very marketable because we've been doing it for years, you know. Um, whether or not Scottish hip hop will, will, you know, make that kind of world scene, I don't know, hopefully. But um, I think we're still going to try and keep pushing to, to make that happen. We can make, we're, we're now setting all these other goals and if we can make it in the States with this record, with this film, then who knows how many other artists can come through, you know, and I think Americans and I think the other markets actually like Scotland a lot, so it just takes someone willing to go out there and do these crazy things and market themselves to break, you know, and then everyone will be looking like Dizzy Rascal did for the London scene. Mm -hmm. I don't want to give too much away about the documentary, uh, but, but it does end on a sort of Low, or, or not, not a low, because like Bit Billy's found what you know, family life and things, yeah. and and you're doing your sort of rock thing. Yeah. Um, but it was very much a case of y y you were separate yeah. from each other. Um, ha has this movie brought you together again? It did in a, in a really weird, uh, therapeutic, <laughs> odd way. You know, I mean. We, because it's this, this is a classic case of two best mates yeah. falling out majorly, isn't it? Yeah, we had some. We had a, that last big fight we had. Uh, that was it, you know. And we never spoke the whole time we did this film. They filmed us separately, you know. And when we watched it, we watched it separately. So um, I think Bill seeing how I was feeling, and me seeing how he was feeling, allowed us to kind of be like, "Wow, he's a real dude. How come we never ever spoke about stuff like that?" You know. And, um, and as well with like with Grant Dixon, um, sorry, with Grant Dixon. Grant's our mutual mate who has yeah. managed the view. Yeah, and, and with him kind of, he was really clever in the way that he was like going between us and be like, oh, Bill says, how you doing? And trying to, you know, knowing that like if I can just get these boys to work together again, this could be huge, you know? And that's what he's kind of done. And, and But, you know, no lies, seeing that the film, we, we both watched the film separately at the end of last year, and it made us. Feel we were both happy in where we were at, but it made us feel like, what if, what if this record, um, what if this, what if there wasn't a Silicon Brains record out there, and it was just a film? I think a lot of people would feel, you know, everyone's been asking us, what, what, what about the music? Let's hear the music. You know, we want to hear some of this music. So we felt it would be betraying, you know, what we just did if we didn't release music. So the film, in some strange way, even though it, it kind of ends in a, in a bit, of, bit of a diner and we, you know, we still kind of hate each other, but it's brought us back together in such a beautiful way, you know, and, and actually now things are so much better with us, you know. Bill's got this great balance and I'm in a really good place musically, I can do whatever music I want and I can just make records every day of my life and that's all I ever wanted to do, you know. So we're really happy and it's really different when you're, when you're an artist and you're, you start every day happy, 
You don't make records just because you want to punch someone in the face. You know, that's a good place to be. And we're in a great position there. I think the book California Scheming is a fantastic read. What does Billy think of it? California Scheming? Um, I, I, think, I think he likes it. You know, I mean, did he read it? Of course, yeah. I mean, he got the. I, I had to you know, send him drafts, and, and there was about. I think we. For him to, be, him to agree, like, we had to go through like nine drafts. You know, and legal and all the stuff that you know we were like. But I mean, and I've said a couple of times. I had to tell in that book. I had to tell the whole story. You know, and so there's certain things that happen in the book that um, wouldn't. I had to tell. You know, so I had to take things that Bill did, and I, you know, and, and there was very much pressure to tell that story of the Brits and tell the story of, you know, and and I was like, well, I wasn't at that one. I was at the mobiles. I wasn't at this. I was at, you know, no, that's, that's not what we do here. We mash things together, and it's like. I know, but you know, Bill's not going to be happy with that. So there was a little, there was a few things like that where Bill wasn't happy that I had kind of taken this, and but there was, but you know, he wasn't a part of it. Didn't want to be a part of it. So I had to tell the story in some way, and it's really difficult when you're in that position. You have to get a product done, and because I got the book done, and it was a nightmare, and it was also therapy. Because I got that done, we were able to get the documentary. So I think Bill is now, you know, he can also. He's, we spoke about it recently. He's read the book recently again, and he's actually loves it. You know, and it's, it's so it's like that thing of when when you're when you're kind of going through something separate, and you, you aren't talking. Everything's a nightmare. But now that we're back talking, and we're making records. Everything's a laugh. You know, so we're in a really good place. <laughs> I, I would imagine that that one thing. Well, one thing that I certainly would have, would have liked to have seen, and if it was a movie, it perhaps would have happened this way. That's the big reveal. Yeah. Because yeah. the big reveal wasn't the big reveal. That that it couldn't. Yeah. Would it be? I like to think of the film as the title's a bit of a fugazi. It's not really a real that's a suck you in type thing. You know, because there's no hoax in talent. You know, we lied we basically marketed ourselves. Mm. We didn't really lie. If we were actors, we would have been lying every day. So all we did was we were actors. And we lied, we used one set of talents to highlight these other set of talents. And there's a lot of artists that I speak to, I spend two two hours of my day, every single day of my life, dealing with young artists now. And a lot of people ask me, how do I get here, how do I get here? And people just want to pull off these little scams now. When you talk to me about scams, and I'm like, look, you could work on your talent. Because we only made it because we were talented. We only got in. We can't, you can't say you're Eminem's friends and then rap and you're not as good as Eminem. We made it because we were as good as Eminem. That was it. We were the real deal. Um, just we just painted ourselves pink if you want, you know, we just gave ourselves a different camouflage. And that was it. We just acted like new new people and they and these people in the industry at the time just thought, oh that's fashionable now. That works. You know, and that that's what we wanted to change. It does come across in in the great hip hop hoax that, that you were perhaps holding back the release of any music. Yeah. Because you were you wanted perfection. Yeah. Now had you just got something out there? And become a success story mm. that you could have been. Yeah. Do you think you'd have continued, or, or would would you have revealed? Do you think who you are? I think. I mean, it, it's a tough one. I mean, I was kind of uh, in control of the production and, and all of the plan, the strategy. It, there, there was. It wasn't exactly like like you see. There was certain things where I gave a record across and I was like that's the record and everyone loved it and that was the one that everyone said yeah. was going to be the hit. And then they changed it. And I was like, no, but this is the one for eight. The yeah. DJs are saying yeah. it's a hit. So then they changed it. And then in their changing of it, they missed the deadline. And the second one, they missed the deadline. So when it got to the third and fourth, there were so many problems already, and our, our band was kind of all over the place. And then we changed it into a rock group thing, and we were going on the road with these big artists. We, I, we were just like, look, we need to stall now. And then it was in the stall and we missed another thing. And then I guess it looked like to my cousin Warren, who doesn't really know the situation, and my sister, who was also just seeing that I'm stalling it. There was very important uh, reasons for stalling it, you know. Um, but also the fact that we were trying to find out the legalities of just changing and becoming this and bringing people in. So it wasn't just a case of I was stalling for no reason. I was trying to figure out a way of, like, can we actually release this and then... You know, will we be sued? And if we find out from our lawyer at the time that we would be sued for everything, if there was anything that was different from the contract we signed, if we if we changed our hair colour and the record didn't sell well, 
You know, if Eminem changes his year records and they don't sell, you get sued. You're signing this deal as yeah. these you sign two as these California guys. guys. Yeah. So we found out at that point after like we missed two chances to release already, and the big one was the the MTV's Brass Band. Mm -hmm. That was the one that I was pushing for, and they just didn't release that because they said the play with myself was uh, too raunchy for for radio, and and that was insane. So we missed that deadline, but. Um, yeah, then we find out that we like actually we could get sued badly here, and we'd spent all the money. So, <laughs> so it wasn't just a case of like there's Gav going. I was thinking, man, we need to stretch this. We need to come up with a new plan because if we release now, we are going to get sued for all the money. And I knew for a fact it was going to all come down mostly on my head, and it would all have been my fault. So I, that was the kind of mostly the reason for it, stalling. But eventually, we, Bill and I, um, did come to the point where we were like, yeah, this is the record. Do whatever you want with it. But at that point was just that was when we had to go in and we had to win over the new um, CEO, the new MD, and that's where it was like. Yeah, there were major, to... major redundancies of the label, yeah. and uh, a lot of people laid off. But yeah, and, but still uh, at that and bands as well sort of dropped. But still at that point, silver brains were never dropped. No, no one. It was like, it was more a case of we're not prioritizing you now until the next uh, launch schedule. Yeah, and we were like that's four or five months away. So Bill was just like, I'm not waiting four or five months, you know. So I wanted to wait four or five months because I, I knew, it, like, at that point, it was like, let's just get it out now. And he was like, well, that's great for you to say now, but I've got a family. I, I no, that, that's the crazy thing. We we see we we see Billy getting married, mm. and it's just like, oh yeah. my goodness. So he's living two really living two lives. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, and that was difficult because for the first part of it, we didn't even allow any Scottish people or friends really to talk to us or we couldn't answer the phone to anyone from Dundee because we knew our accents would kind of start to slip back in. So I was always, I was a bit, you know, worried about like, because Mary doesn't have a strong Scottish accent I guess, but um, I was worried about Bill going back up there and coming back with a draw, but he never really did, but I was kind of worried about that. I, I, I think, I mean, I can definitely see one of my big thoughts of what happened was I started to panic about everything because everything was on me. I was all the pressure of, you know, I had the schedules every day, I had to organise everyone, you know. So, no one really, I guess, knew much of the stress as what was happening, but I did, and I was just, you know, in the studio and going from the studio to meetings and really just panicking about everything, so, um, and that just took its toll, eventually, as you can see in the film. <laughs> There's an EP already available on iTunes, and the, is this album yeah. that you're working on? And that, that's what I'm particularly interested in, yeah. knowing how you're, how you're going about that and, and what's yeah. happening with it. Well. When Hopeless Work were touring last year, we did like about 170 odd shows, and on that, I was extremely bored. On that, you know, it is boring touring, you know, like um, especially if you're trying not not drinking and you're trying to stay healthy and fit. So I was producing the whole time, and I was making a record beat-wise that I wanted to sound better than uh, Ed the Way, Derek Six Chambers, and the Slim Shady LP. So when Grant kind of let Bill know that I was making that mu like musically making that record. And um, when we saw the film, Bill was like, well, yeah, well, of course I want to hear it, hear it, you know. So we sat down together and I played it, some of the beats, and, and he was just loving it. And I was like, yeah, and we started kind of freestyling with the beats together. And it felt like we'd never, you know what I mean? It was like everything out the window, all that, all the kind of stuff between us, the bad stuff, gone. You know, we just started, we recorded one, two tracks, and then within, you know, a week in Dundee, um, the Teapot Studios, we... And we had like 10, 12 songs and it was like, oh man, you know, and, and then it was like, oh, let's just do some more and let's actually make this like one of the greatest hip hop albums and that's what we want to do. We didn't want to come back and do anything unless we could do something that lyrically could be on the level of Eminem, hook wise as well, it could be remarkable, huge songs, you know, and it just, just explode it, you know, and I think now running up, now we've got labels after us, now we've got um, big publishing of deal offerings and in the states as well as here, so it's it's a weird thing, you know. It takes sometimes it takes the most craziest journey to, to get something happening in the real way. So you're back again, mm -hmm. rapping in Scottish accents. Yeah, rapping in our own sound, our own voices. Um, and, that, and and there's on this EP, you can actually hear two tracks that we did that were our, our fans that we had at the time, their favourite tracks. So we put them on the EP, and then there's three new tracks. So you can hear the difference in the voice. Mm. It's quite evident, but. It doesn't make you, when you hear the Scottish, you kind of go, what most people are kind of saying is, well, that actually does sound a little bit, it doesn't sound to, so far removed from the American voice, it just sounds like a more original sounding American, 
You know, if you were like, let's listen to it as a, as a rap fan, you wouldn't go, oh, that's crap, you know, that's, that's from another country. You would just go, someone's a bit of an odd American accent, you know? Because that's the, that's the crazy thing, and not something that I'd thought about before. The, the music, when you switched from being two lads who were in Dundee to being from California, it was the same songs, it was the same lyrics, yeah. you just changed the accents. Yeah, <laughs> and that's the thing that really... It shouldn't work! Uh, yeah, and, and there's, there's obviously some words with the chain because they don't rhyme. Yeah. <laughs> you know, which is really weird, but um, yeah, we were a bit annoyed, we were really annoyed at that, actually, that it was just, these are the same songs, you know, how can this, all of a sudden it's coloured in this new, kind of, over the score, American, you know, way, and it's, it's all of a sudden great, you know? Um, and it, it, even the first thing that happened was winning a One Extra competition. And then um, it was Joe Wiley that played one of our tracks for a week. And that track was one of the tracks that we did in the audition. And it's like, laughed at as Scottish, but then we do put the American accent on and it's one of the competition that's getting week-long Radio 1 plays. It's like, this is mental, you know? But then you think of it, it's not mental, it's just marketing. You know? And, we, and that's the thing when you're, a, when you're an upcoming artist or you're a signed artist, you get your hair styled, they write your songs for you, you know, you do what they say, and if you don't, you're in trouble. If you don't uh, have your record selling, you know, making that quota, then in two years' time, you're going to have to sleep with someone more famous than you to stay in the public eye. Silbone Brains, we produced every beat. We did our own everything style, and we made everything ourselves. No one controlled anything over us. We did it all ourselves. So when people talk about keeping it real, we kind of kept it real a little bit more, you know? That, that, that idea of keep it real is insane, you know? Like, rappers shoot these videos, and they got the big cars, and they cut the girls that they don't know, and they hire the mansions, and then afterwards they go home and they kiss their mom goodnight. It's bogus, you know, and I think that's a good thing that we can say, and we're quite proud to say that keep it real is, is, is built. You know, you want to keep it real, make some money for your family, you know, put some food on the table, that's keeping it real. You know, be a man, you know, don't you know, get held back by young five, ten people in your local scenes idea, you know. Go out there and do something big. <laughs> Brains McLeod. Thank you very much. Gavin Bain. <laughs> <laughs> great to see you as always, and uh, really enjoyed the movie. It is the great hip hop hoax, which folk are going to get a chance to see on the telly. And then we have the album, and going to be touring as well. We're going to, yeah, we've got a booking agent, and uh, there's some big promoters coming on board, and, and, um, and it's not any small stuff either. It's all pretty decent sized things and then obviously the festivals next year and they're all everything's just lining up. I mean <laughs> we're really stoked about it. But I can't wait for the album. The, the the TV screenings are gonna be well I think BBC Scotland is gonna be the seventh of October um, and then BBC two uh, everywhere else on the fourteenth. And right about that time we're gonna um, put a few more little records out um, and then drop the record, drop the album. And uh, <laughs> see, see what happens, see the reaction. We've got lots of uh, really crazy, shocking music videos coming as well. <laughs> In demand. Uncut.